Bring me proof that the sallow man is dead. God welcome. Until then, I have nothing further to say to you. Your Highness, good to see you again. Of course. Told you I would, didn't I? Sure thing. I'll start hunting that to... It's strange, Godwoken, how much I thought I knew but didn't. How sure I was of the path Lucian had set me upon. How sure I was of me. Of what I was capable of. And what I wasn't. Yes, yes. Yet, one more corpse is just one more corpse, isn't it? All the others, they still dissolve to bone. None that I lost can ever return to me. Perhaps we may at least be reunited in the hall. Before, whenever I needed answers, I'd turned to prayer. Now, when I have questions, I'm not sure whom I'd turn to. I think back and realize a dead divine never had answers. The wind carried my words to nowhere and everywhere, but certainly not to Lucian's ears. Even so, I don't think I'm ready to trust myself. Not yet. I'm no Godwoken. I have no place on the Nameless Isle. All I can do is urge you to contemplate with the greatest of care every move you make. Not but the demon I'm hunting. A trivial task, really, compared to your current pursuits of divinity. She's a beautiful enigma, isn't she? All elven grace. And her own... I hope to hear her... Hmm. You don't look very divine to me. What are you waiting for? Ugh. Let them tear each other to scraps for all I care. You need to ascend. Everything else is a distraction. Please tell me you understand that. I'll kill you and then myself if I find out I brought you all the way here for nothing.
Hmm. The destination pyramid doesn't answer the call. Is something blocking you? Hmm. The destination pyramid doesn't answer the call. Is something blocking you? Yes. I think you know the answer to that. He has a date. Whatever comes after that... Sabeel slides her hand in yours. Makes your heart skip a beat with her particularly coquettish smile. I've... something I need to tell you. She scrapes her throat, hesitates, almost as if she's a bit nervous. There's a first. I'm... I'm afraid you're going to accuse me of killing the mood, but... Thing is, I need to talk to you about the Master. No, not anymore. Or so I hope. My dear sweet prince, I've grown to trust you. More than I've trusted anyone since... Since I've had names on my skin. Wasn't easy, I know. Come, sit down with me for a moment. You both sit down, cross-legged, knees to knees, hand in hand. Suddenly, a melody. Sibyl sings a song, haunting in its simplicity. She uses no words, sounds rather. It's beautiful, yet somehow menacing. This is my scar song. It's all the master needs to make me his slave once more, unless... Your voice opposes his. I will soon confront him, with you by my side. My life and my liberty I place in these soft, strong hands of yours. Will you sing? Good answer. Her cat's eyes close as she leans in for a kiss. You kiss. It's sweet and wonderful. You wish it could last forever. My word. You both get up and smile to one another warmly. When you hear a sound in the distance and turn to look, Seville pats you affectionately on the bottom. Adventure calls, but... I say we do this again sometime. One step, then another, ever closer. You can tell from her bearing, Sibyl has never been so ready to kill, so on the brink of impending action. She's like a cat, all concentrated muscle, that split second before it pounces. Another step, ever closer. The moment has finally come. She's found the master. The eyes of predators meet. Sabeel. He snaps his fingers, and she involuntarily snaps to attention. Here you go, breaking my heart. That's the plan, mastermind. He sighs, sadly. I don't begrudge you your freedom, Sabeel. Your escape relieved me of having to witness your death by your own hand. The inevitable last command. I would have watched you, like I have all this time. Glad to see you live, sometimes even laugh. I'm very fond of you, you know? The feeling's not quite mutual. Not yet. 
Another snap. Different fingers, different sound. She looks to the ground. She's... she's bowing before him. Utter control. The tool of a tyrant, you think? But you're mistaken. Let me indulge you with an explanation. Everything I do, I do for a much greater good. The supreme example of this is you, Sabeel. She's the prime scion. It had to be her. The other scions knew and welcomed her. They sought out their own killer. It was all so very elegant. What I did had to be done, Sabeel, and I had to be the orchestrator. For I am the House of Shadows. I am the Fate Weaver. I am the hand that guides a blind world. Even yours, Red Prince. Sabeel slowly draws her needle. Time to get to the point. My, my, you still have the needle I gave you. How very gratifying. A fine instrument, is it not? Precise, exact. Just like me. Just like you. You should know that I forced you to shed the blood of Scions because rather than a killer, it transformed you into a savior of untold millions. Here's the final truth, Sabeel. The true evil here is not me. It's you. The Mother Tree and her scions do not seek to carve out their own part of peace in this world. They seek to carve out the whole wide world for themselves. They want their roots to conquer every last inch of Rivalon. World domination. The prevalence of one race over all others. That is what they desire. That is what I counteract. Not quite wrong, not quite right. At last, from darkness a ray of light, though far too late it shines. I don't begrudge you your freedom, Sabeel, but you came looking for me driven by no more than ordinary bloodlust. All you see is red. You've lost sight of all reason. You know how the scar works. You know I have but to sing a single tune. You've no hope whatsoever of defeating your master. He sings. The scar song swells. A thousand tiny needles in Sabeel's soul, chipping away at her will. She looks at you with hope and defiance, gives the signal. You must sing the song. You're absolutely heartless, aren't you? We'll go far together, you and I. The song continues. Sibyl's eyes grow dull. She's completely under the lizard's thrall once more, lost to you forever. How may I serve you, Master? I think I'm about to have another chat, but in the meantime, my dear, you may fetch me my slippers. Red Prince. I very much appreciate the gesture of goodwill that is Sibyl. Shows me you can negotiate. Shows me how far you're willing to go for your own private interests. It's these private interests of yours that merit discussion. His eyes are black holes in a black-skinned sky. He bows with the deference of a noble among nobles, swinging ever so playfully between sincerity and sarcasm. I suppose I should start with an apology for the attempts on your life. Talk about getting off on the wrong foot, wouldn't you say?
to my astonishment and, I admit, my admiration. You may find this hard to believe, but given different circumstances, I would have been quite content to let you live. Let you play the Emperor from your golden throne in your golden city. Alas, certain events beyond even my control were set in motion. Ripples became waves. I had to act. And so I arranged for you to meet with an unfortunate, self-inflicted end. Tell me, Your Majesty, do you know what it takes to force a succubus into submission? Yes, so you do. Must have been quite the display of source. Very impressive. It's almost a pity we find ourselves on such opposite sides. All because of who you are, and all because of who she is. It was Sadha who set events in motion, Red Prince. If you were the ripple, she was the wave. She's a tidal wave that will take wing, become a murder of dragons, red as the setting sun, that will alight every corner of this world with the terrible splendor of fire. Don't you see, you who wants to be Emperor, that you're enacting the downfall of our race? The simple truth of the matter is that, yes, we lizards were dragons once. The mightiest creatures to rule sky, earth, and sea. But such was the jealousy of our power that all other races united against us and brought us to the brink of extinction. No one knows what happened next. Was it wizardry? Was it Zol Stissa who took mercy on us even then? Suddenly we were dragons no more. Lizards instead. And as lizards we flourished and built an empire once more. But the House of Dreams trades in prophecy. They've always known we could be dragons again. For one day a man and a woman will be born, and their skin will be red, and the fruit of their union will be great red dragons. You must move beyond understanding into action. Listen to me. I am the House of Shadows. This is my role. I see the great games in motion. Allow them their flux when they advance for good. Cut them short when they advance for evil. Even if that means doing evil. The Renaissance of Dragons would spell the end of our race, plain and simple. To that end, I needed you to die, but you proved to be all too worthy an opponent. An opponent I would now see an ally. Ally with me, Red Prince. Find Sadha and kill her. If she births dragons, all other races will unite against us, and this time they will destroy us for good. We were spared last time. The condition of our continued existence was that we'd never let the dragon roar again. You look each other in the eyes, like two chess players contemplating their next move. What will yours be? You strike a dual pose with composed elegance. All of him becomes malice. Traitor. You insist to advance for evil, and so I must cut you short. Head first. He draws his weapon, ready for the final confrontation between the Red and the Shadow Prince.
How may I help you? Sabeel Slater? I've... something I need to tell you. She scrapes. I'm... I'm... No, my dear, since I've had names on my skin, wasn't come. You both suddenly? This I will soon confront. Will you sing? Thank you. Her cat's eyes close as she leans in for a kiss. Oh, I... She scrambles to her... F Just sing the song when the moment comes. Please. There's no time to waste. Sabeel Slider. I've... She scraped. I'm... No, my dear, since I've had names on my... Wasn't to come. You both suddenly... This... I will soon... Will you sing? Good answer. Her cat's eyes... You kid. My word... You both... Adventure call. One step, then another, ever closer. You can tell from her bearing, Sibyl has never been so ready to kill, so on the brink of imp another step. Sibyl, here you go. That's the plan. He sighs. I don't begrudge you. All you see, you've no hope. What he sings. The scar song. The song continues. How may I serve? I think I'm about to have another chat. But No time to waste. Sabeel slides. I've. She scrapes. I'm. No, my dear, since I wasn't come. You both suddenly. This. I will. S will you say good answer? Her cat. You kid. My what? You both. Adventure. One step, then another, ever closer. You can tell from her bearing, Sibyl, another st- The eye, Sibyl, he snapped- Hey, that's the plan, mastermind. He sighs. I don't begrudge, I would- I'm very- The feeling- Not- Another snap- Utter- Let me indulge you with an explanation. She's the pro- It was all what- a Sibyl's- Time to- My, my. Just like me. You should know. Here's the- f The mother tree. They want their root to conquer every last inch of Rivalon. World domination. The prevalence of one race over all others. That finally figured that out, did you? But there is merit to my madness. Can you say the same of your mania? I don't begrudge you your free. All you see is you've no hope. He sings. She looks at you with hope and defiance. Your voice harmonizes with the master's. Stunned, he hesitates, and yours becomes the dominant melody. Sabeel is free from his influence. Dear me, you're a miracle worker. I'll take it from here. The patient cat finally pounces. She strikes, precisely, exactly. Her needle pierces his neck, spears his vocal cords, filling his throat with blood. Checkmated and muted, he staggers back, all a feared fury. This is it. It's time to kill the mar-
The master's dead. Finally, I am free. yourself.
sense something nearby. Sata must die. She must. Yes. Oh, honey, you should be. It was a trust not lightly given, I assure you. The mere recollection of this tune. It haunts me. Sometimes, in dreams, I hear it whistled, and I fear it's real. 
I fear I'll never wake up again because it holds me enthralled in the night. And when I think of what it made me do, it's enough to make me want to flay whoever sings it. She pats your shoulder awkwardly. <laughs> but darling, no need to tense up so. I'd never do that to you. Well, not unless you'd attempt to sing the song before we meet the master. But you're far too smart for any such shenanigans, aren't you? Of course you are. Now then, on a more serious note, how about a kiss? Really? My, aren't we squeamish? It feels magnificent, if somewhat unreal. But first things first. You look on as Sabeel bears her arm and drags her needle across the word master like a knife, drowning the black ink in blood. With a few ripples of sauce, the wound closes, leaving behind but new scar tissue that effaces all trace of the hated word that was. Thank you. You're such a sweetheart. She laughs. Her cat eyes dance with mirth. Now it's over. She takes your hand in hers, meets your eyes in earnest. I just... I just can't thank you enough. I could never have defeated the Master without you. I owe you... everything. But I do, and I won't forget. I am free now. She places a hand over the fresh scar on her arm. I've known the opposite too long to want to spend another day hollow with hate, another night hollow with loneliness. I most certainly can. If you show me a little love. You kiss her on the cheek, and she laughs, full of life.
fine. Did the God King send ya? Did he send ya? As ready, God King. They came out of nowhere and killed us all. As ready, rise me up. Rise me. I serve. I serve the God King. Rise me up. Rise me up, God King. You are the Shadow Prince, master of the House of Shadows. A born rascal, you have spent many a long year honing your abilities. You have a rare skill with a knife in your hand, and you have taken that skill to heart. You are a priest of the kin, your face raised to the sun, your blood warming to the heat upon your skin. All is well, and then all is not well. Cries of war come from the shore, and death comes quick.
Lucky find. Reading of the wonders of Zolstissa, it's clear where her people get their feelings of supremacy from. Might I prevail upon you to answer a question? You see, I am on a mission most grave. I seek a sorcerer most foul, most reviled, most feared. Her name is... His pincers scissor wildly. Scepter the Ineffable! Have you heard tell of this wicked beast on your travels? I shall slay her with a single thrust of my sword-like claw. For mine is an ancient and noble order, bent on destroying that which would destroy. Scepter is a sorcerer, and I am a source hunter. Dead? Incredible! You met Scepter with naught but your fleshly carapace to commend you, and you emerged victorious. Your powers must be many. You are a model of your kind, and even more incredibly, of mine. Take this, a carapace of your own, to protect you from dangers great and small. He reaches out and tentatively pokes a bit of your tender flesh. Use it well, and my thanks to you, good knight. May our paths cross again soon. Imperio, away! The symbol of the dragon's cult has lasted for e This is a sign of an ancient... The arrowhead points the... This is not quite the safest place I've ever been. The spirit before you drips, soars from his raggedly slit throat. Realizing that you can see him, he throws a wry smile in your direction. Ah, Godwoken. You know how you relive bad exams in your nightmares? Good news, you get to relive them in death, too. He rolls his neck, soars gurgling and spouting from the deep gash. He laughs, and his laugh is a bitter one. As I was facing the trials, I was killed by another Godwoken hopeful. He's long gone now, but I'm still here. I just can't stop thinking about it. That one answer. The one I couldn't get in time. Anon Fallon Reveal. Anon Fallon Reveal. What in the void comes next? His face lights up, gratitude shining forth from it. That's it! 
That's it! He begins to fade from view. But as he disintegrates, he traces an esoteric sigil in the air between you and pushes forceful energy into you, restoring you. 